What's going on, Internet? Iron Jordan here. So today, courtesy of uh, Nami Peace TCG, we got the full card list and the translations for the Big Mom starter deck that's coming out in Japan very soon. Uh, I actually think it comes out in early March. I could be wrong about that. Uh, but it should come out around the same time that Set 2 and the Black Structure deck come out in uh, the English version. But what we're going to do today is we're going to look over these cards and we're going to evaluate them. Um, there's really actually not that many to evaluate because there's a lot of vanillas here and a lot of like redundant effects. But we're going to do our best to <clears throat> parse through the cards that are going to be very, very good in yellow as it becomes the fifth color in the game. So first of all, we have the leader, uh, Charlotte Lin, obviously, or Lin Lin. Uh, this is a obviously monocolored 5 life, 5,000 power leader. Dawn times 2 when attacking, so if you're at 7k... You can uh, you may add one card from the top of, uh, or bottom of your life to your hand. If your life is at two or less, you may place up to one card from your hand to the top of your life area. This is important to note that these are separate effects. Uh, the first is the cost. So when attacking, you may add one card from the top of your life uh, to the top or bottom uh, to your hand. Uh, this is important because in One Piece, the rule is that you have to add the top card of your life to your hand when you're taking damage. Uh, this gets around that. So you can do some cool things where, like, you know you put a trigger card in the top of your deck with one of your effects, or the top of your life with one of your effects, and you don't want to take that one off of its effect. And so you can take the bottom one to see if you can get a different card, and then put one back on the bottom, um, or you put it back on the top. It has to go on the top, though. So from what I've seen, there are no effects that put cards back onto the bottom of your life uh, yet. Um, but obviously, I haven't actually even read all of these cards, so we're kind of doing a spot, you know, read as we go. But I think this is pretty good. I think both this leader and Katakuri are going to have spots in the meta. I think it's going to be a little bit more dedicated on, like, how you want to play the deck. Katakuri is a little more aggressive. He is one Dawn as a 7k swinger. Um... One Dawn 7k swinger that also gets to mess with your opponent's life. He might be a good counter this deck realistically because he gets to mess, he gets to change your opponent's life and you put take the top card and put it on the bottom or the bottom card put it on top or whatever. And so Katakuri might be a more like aggressive or like counter leader to this strategy uh, in particular. But this deck is going to be very uh, determined by how good the triggers are in this deck. Because if you can set up good triggers, uh, it, I guess it's like security control from Digimon. It's not a deck that I ever really played, but I guess that's what this is like. Um, notably, you can always take a life to your hand, but you can only put a card back onto your life if you have two cards at the time of you taking a life. So if you go from three to two, you can take one, but if you're at five or four, you can't put one back in. You're just burning yourself for a life for free, which is card draw. And we got another translation here. And then there's just a, a one drop vanilla. Not really much to say about that. We have a 4-drop 6k Charlotte Katakuri. I actually just finished Whole Cake Island today in the manga, and it was fantastic. This guy was, I mean, he's one of the best villains I think that the, the series has had. He's been incredible. Um, but 4-cost on play, look at the top card. Uh, of, look at the top card of your opponent's life area, of your, your opponent's life area, and put it either at the top or bottom of the life area so you can set up your triggers and stuff like that or you know may deny your opponent triggers then if you have less life cards than your opponent this card this character gains rush that's pretty strong i think that if if this card was a zero plus 1k counter first of all it would be some crazy power creep because the vanillas in the set are zero plus 1k uh for 6k um power this would just be an upgraded on the on the vanillas it would be a straight upgrade because he can sometimes get rush and he gets the uh the, the life effect uh, i think this card's pretty good I think this is definitely something you'll play some number of because having a late game rusher is very uh, important. We see just the power of how good rush is. And so just the idea, like this is probably a three or four of in most yellow decks, at least early on while this deck, while this color doesn't have a big, you know, huge identity for itself. But I definitely see you running uh, quite a few of this guy for sure. This card is very good. That's the other translation. We have a 5-drop 6k Charlotte Snack. No counter power here. Dawn times 1 when attacking. You may add the top or bottom card uh, of your life area to your hand. This character gains Banish and plus 1k for the battle. So if he's got Dawn times 1, then he'll be an 8k. He'll be an 8k Banisher, which is definitely not nothing. This is a pretty good 
mid-range threat. Having no counter power is not the best. And also, like, like this is just one of those cards that's really banking on your opponent not having blockers and stuff like that. I think that this card is interesting. I don't think it's insane. I could be proven wrong. I, I think it's fine. I think it's pretty good. Also, the, the Pitzels, I think this is because the uh, the translations and the images all come from uh, this picture back here. And so they're just slapping the... Uh, they're blowing up the image and then doing the translation. And so the image is getting stretched when they're translating. So, on to the next one. Uh, Charlotte Daifuku. This is a 4 cost 5k counter what, plus, one, uh, plus 1k. Dawn times 1 when attacking. You may take one card from the top or bottom of your life area. Put it in your hand. Put up to one card from the top of your deck uh, into your life area. I don't love this because you're putting a blind card into your life area. Obviously, like, if you just need to draw cards, this is probably fine. Because this is just a version of card draw. Uh, as you're not putting the card uh, from your hand, you know, you're putting the card from your, your life. Um, but if you're trying to specifically do, like, trigger-based shenanigans, this is maybe not good. But as a draw engine, if you can keep this thing alive, then this is pretty good. This is on par with Boa Hancock. It's actually easier to... Um, easier to get than Bo Hancock because, you know, you can have six, seven cards in hand to do this, but obviously Bo can do it on her block as well. So she can block, draw a card, and then draw when she attacks the next turn. So I think this is fine. Um, we'll see how this is. Uh, like I said, it's comparable to Bo Hancock in the effect and the power and stuff like that, but we'll see how it does in practice. Uh, we got a two-cost vanilla here. Nothing to say about that. We have a three-cost Charlotte Brule 1K blocker. This is just the... Um, this is just the Boa Hancock trigger card, but for yellow. Uh, now, granted, to be fair, yellow has this life stacking effect, so this is going to be way better in this deck. The Arlon deck, like, plays with triggers and stuff like that. This is going to be way better, honestly. Um, just the ability to put this card in your life uh, from your hand and then guarantee that you get a blocker. Like, the, the Boa Hancock card is fine, but you kind of have to play four of it to, to get any use out of it because doing doing anything less than that you're just getting uber sacky you know when it comes to, to hitting your your life triggers whereas you could play you know some number of this if you're playing the life stack effects you can play some number of this and then guaranteed get a blocker uh which is very very good there's gonna be some very interesting yellow mirror matches where you're looking for your opponent's trigger cards and trying not to hit them whenever you do damage and stuff uh, Charlotte Pudding, this is just the 2k. On play, you can uh, look at uh, one life card from the top of or bottom of your, wait, the top of your opponent's life area and put it to either top or bottom of the life area. Okay, so this is a mirror match card, but it's mostly just the 2k. Um, so I, I really don't see this being used for its on play effect very often, but the 2k is obviously all, always very good. This card, I think this card's very good. This is Charlotte Mont d'Or, uh, 3 cost 4k plus 1k. Activate main, you may rest this character and take the card at the top and bottom of your life, add it to your hand, keep up to one of your opponent's characters that costs three or less, and it has a trigger, you may trash one card from your hand play this card. I think this is going to be one of the better cards out of the set. It's removal, it gets rid of blockers, it gets rid of aggressive low drops, uh, things like uh, Ikiku, it gets rid of Zoros, it gets rid of Nico Robbins, all of these cards that your opponents are playing that are three drop, uh, three drop aggressive threats, this just gets rid of. Uh, at the cost of drawing you a card. <laughs> so I think this is pretty good. I, I like this card a lot. Yeah, it rests itself to get attacked, but like it did its job at that point. Because it's activate main. It's it's three uh it's three dawn as a removal spell. And it has counter power, and it can be played out of your out of your trigger. Yeah, this is a good card. I like this card a lot. Uh seven drop Charlotte Lulin. This is the best card, I think, in the starter deck. Uh, I think the category is very strong. I think this card is very strong. And I think the three drop we just talked about are very strong. This card for seven is insane. So it's 8k. That's pretty big for a seven drop. Uh, it's seeing that the uh, the seven drops, a lot of the seven drops in OP01 and the star decks and stuff are 7ks with effects. So on play, your opponent chooses one effect from below. So the player's opponent, the opponent of the player who plays this card chooses the effect. They either trash one of their lives. So when you play this card, they either trash one of their lives or they give you a life from the top of your deck. This is very good. Uh, obviously, the wording is a little weird, a little funky. We had a discussion about this in our group chat already. The wording on this is a little funky. It'll get cleared up very quickly, though. When you play this card, your opponent either crits a life or they give you a life from the top of your deck. 
but they get to choose it. Now, obviously, this card gets less good as you go into the late game. And uh, when you go into the late game and your opponent doesn't have any life or anything, they can just choose to crit a life. And then it doesn't mean anything to them because they don't have any life for you to crit. So they're not going to give you a life, you know. But early game, like if you can get this out early, like if you get this out on turn three going second, uh, no, turn four going second, you know, you're going to be fine. Uh, this is pretty good. Um, and also, like if we ever get like a purple yellow strategy, you can just get to the point where you accelerate into this uh, and then just start dropping these because 8K is a big body. And that made sense for Big Mom, because uh, look at her. We have Zeus. Uh, we have the uh, the homies here. Oh, they even have the homie tag. That's cool. Uh, so 3 cost, 3k, plus 1k counter. Activate main. You may rest this card. Choose up to one of your Charlotte lens. It gains Banish. And then it has a trigger. Play this card. Um, if you're play like if we ever get to the point where we see like a bunch of Big Mom cards, and they're like the main boss monsters of yellow, then this might be fine. Uh, and then the next one is the Prometheus, I think. Oh, no, it's another 4-drop vanilla. So, yeah, 4-drop, 6k, plus 1k vanilla. And he's strike. He's not special or anything. Uh, Prometheus, so counter. He has the he has the trigger. Plays card, 3-drop, 3k. Activate main, rest this card. Up to one of your Charlotte Lynn, gain double attack. Uh, I think these cards would be a lot better if they were cheaper. Like, if they were lower cost. Because 3-drop, 3k is like a weird stat line for a card that mostly is not going to be attacking ever. Um... But yeah, if you're if you're trying to, it could set up this really funny play where like if you play just a bunch of trigger cards, like I guess if you're playing the Big Mom deck in particular, you're playing the Zeus, you're playing the Prometheus, you're playing the Brule, and then you're playing this extra card that we're gonna talk about later, where you're just like security controlling your opponent, where you're just going, okay, cool, I'm gonna put these cards into my into my stack, into my life, and I'm gonna play a Big Mom, and then if you hit these cards, it's gonna make my Big Mom more of a threat to to kill you. So I guess I could see that. So you give this card double strike banish, which is crazy. Um, absolutely insane. We have a three drop vanilla Peckham, so he has the 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 three three drop five k. That's standard for vanillas for three drops, so one k counter. Uh, next we've got the extra cards. There's two or three event cards, I think. Uh, this is the good one. This one is, I think, this is the best. Uh, I think this in particular is the best event card for yellow so far. So it's a five drop. Activate main. Your opponent chooses one of these effects. Your opponent trashes the top card of their life area or place the top card of your deck, top of your life. It is the big mom card in an extra card. And also it has an activate main. Uh, or I'm sorry, it has a trigger that activates its main, which is insane. So you have so many different... It, you're giving the um, you're giving the opponent these, uh, these life or death... Uh, questions, which is very um, thematic for Big Mom herself. It's it's very on theme with what she does. You know, she presents everybody this question: you stay and give her a little bit of your life force, or uh, or you or you die. <laughs> so she takes something from you. Uh, next, oh boy, the most pixelated of them all: the Power Mochi. This is a counter. This is the worst one drop counter I think of the game. Look it up to one card from the top or bottom, uh, top of your your opponent's life area, place at the top or bottom of the life area, then. Uh, up to one of your leader character cards gets plus 2k during the battle. Trigger, draw one card, leader, the top one card. Of, it's the same thing. Um, without the 2k pounder. Uh, I guess like if you're playing a trigger deck, you can maybe play this, but I, I just don't see it being very good at all. Um, the, one K, the one drop 2k counters don't really do that much because most good players in the game are going to play around. They're going to hit you for 7k anyway into your leader, and so this is not going to do anything. Uh, I don't really see this being very good. And then we have the Queen Mama Chanter. This is, from my understanding, probably just to uh, reuse the Zeus and the Prometheus and other cards that have uh, that have triggers. So activate main, rest the stage. You may add one card from the top or bottom of your life to your hand. Place up to one of your characters that costs uh, three face up on top of its owner's life area. So you're, cho you're choosing to draw another card by putting a card that you have in play already into your life area. So I guess... You know, that's something. I guess, like, if this deck gets, like, a one-drop or gets, like, two drops that are cantrips, like, if you get a one-drop searcher, you play the one-drop, it searches, and then you play this. You put the one-drop back into your uh, your zone, especially, like, if it has trigger or something like that, and then you draw a card that you want to play instead. This could be good. But, uh, yeah, that is, I think, the entire deck. It sure is. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. I, I think this has got some pretty powerful cards in it. 
uh, and I think that we're going to see yellow be a very interesting color. I'm probably not going to play uh, going to play Charlotte Lin Lin Lin. I'm probably going to play um, Katakuri if I play yellow. I think he's looking very strong. And he's probably a little bit more my play style, but this definitely has legs for sure. All of the star decks have been good so far. The only like the star deck leader that's the star deck leaders have been like even even the bad star deck leaders are still good. Like even Sakazuki is still good. Even Crocodile is still good. They're not bad at all. They're they're fine. They're just not as good as the other ones. I think this is you know, somewhere in between that. So, uh, yeah, no, I like this a lot. I'm really excited for Yellow to come out and see how it does in uh, Asia so that we can, you know, get a little bit better idea of how it's going to do. But I think, it's a, I think it's a good deck. So let me know what you guys think about it. Are you excited to play Yellow? Uh, are you excited for the One Piece card game? Uh, let's talk about it in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.